Okay, that was almost a very sad ending for me. Hey guys! So, I have to say, it's been quite a while since I've worked on any Disney puzzles, and I have been really getting the itch recently. Because let's be honest here, you know, there's, there's nothing better than a Disney image. I mean, at least to me, I know not everybody's into Disney, but you know what? What I really want to do in this video today is I want to do a comparison between two pretty popular brands. And both of these brands are German. And the first puzzle that I want to work on is one from Schmidt. And this one is called Snow White Discovers the Cottage. It is a Thomas Kincaid image. It is 1,000 pieces, and it's 693 by 493 millimeters when it's completed. Now, aside from the fact that you already know, or at least most of you already know, how I feel about Thomas Kincaid images, um, this is a Schmidt puzzle, as I said before, which, as most of you know, if you've watched my Schmidt review, I was in, I was in love. I honestly felt like it was my best Disney puzzle experience yet. And because of that, I am super excited to work on this image because look at it, it's absolutely gorgeous. We have Snow White creeping up on the dwarf's cottage here. The animals are just blankly staring at her. The forest looks absolutely serene and beautiful. I can't wait to do this. I wanna open it right now, but you know, let's not, let's not go crazy here. I want to compare a Schmidt puzzle with a Ravensburger puzzle. And this one was actually sent to me from one of you guys, so thank you, Connie. And this one is called Cinderella. It is from Ravensburger's Disney Collector's Edition series. It's 1,000 pieces, and it's 70 by 50 centimeters when it's completed. Now, I mean, it's not a Thomas Kincaid image, but I mean, come on, this, it, this Disney scene here is just absolutely gorgeous. The colors just seem, it just seems very rich to me. And I love the film reel going around this image with the different scenes of the movie. Overall, fantastic image. But I'm curious if I'm going to change my mind with my overall thoughts on the Ravensburger brand. But you know what? It's, you know, it's got a lot of work to do here for me to, you know, kind of make me feel like it's just as good or, you know, pretty much worth all the hype because I know Ravensburger is extremely popular. So as I said, you know, I really want to compare the overall characteristics and qualities of these puzzle pieces. And of course, you know, that all plays into the whole experience of each one as well. But we'll see, right? Who, who knows? I might change my mind at the end of this. I doubt it. But you know, you never know. We'll see, right? But either way, I am super looking forward to putting both of these images together because they're Disney. And you know, what? what's better than that? So anyways, guys, you know what? I'm I, enough. Enough is enough. Let's get on with this comparison because, you know, I can't wait to see both of these images completed. All right, so let's get going. All right, so let's finally unbox these two. I, I've actually just got back from my trip a couple of days ago, so I'm hoping my words aren't too slurred or, you know, I'm rambling all over the place. But anyways, let's finally, finally get into this because I've, I've got the puzzling itch. But anyways, let's move on. So let's open the Ravensburger set first. This one does have plastic wrap, so let's remove that real quick. All right, and let's get this open. All right, so we have our pieces in a bag and no poster, which is a pretty common thing with Ravensburger sets, though I have heard from some of you that they're starting to put them in the boxes now. But anyways, let's just look at this real quick. Now, as you can see here, the bags do have like holes in them, I guess for aeration, I, I, I don't know. But um, as most of you do know, uh, Ravensburger are known for having quite a bit of puzzle dust, so I'm gonna make sure I empty this inside the box because you know we're gonna do two puzzles anyways. All right, and as you can see, my hand looks quite foggy in there because this is covered in puzzle dust. I mean, 
I mean, look at that. Sorry, I'm I'm like all over the place with my camera views, but I'm trying my best here. But yeah, Ravensburger, um, they love them puzzle dust. So yeah, let's just see these pieces here. Now, before I get more into um, what, we do, what we're dealing with here, I want to open up the Schmidt puzzle so that we can kind of do a quick little comparison in terms of the piece quality. So let's open the Schmidt puzzle. Now, as you can see here, Schmidt also has quite a bit of puzzle dust. I mean, now that I look at it, look at it, it almost seems quite comparable to Robin's Burger. But let's open these up and put these out in the box as well without, you know, mixing anything up here. All right, yeah, look, puzzle dust is pretty much the same with both brands. So yeah, just just be aware of that with these. You you don't really want to put them on your nice puzzle table surface, especially if it's one of those non-slip surfaces, because it's going to cake quite a bit on top of it. So yeah, we'll leave them in the boxes and let's just see very briefly what these are like. Now here's the Schmidt and here's the Robinsberger piece. In terms of piece size, these 1000 count puzzles, they, they look pretty much the same, honestly. And in terms of thickness, the Schmidt does look thicker than Robinsberger. What we're, I'm going to get my calipers later and, you know, get the, um, the difference between the two. Now, in terms of print, I mean, the color quality, the vibrancy, they, they look pretty much the same, actually. And in terms of the finish, I mean, neither of these have a very high gloss finish. They, they're both on the matte side. I mean, you get a little bit when it's, you know, directly looking at the window, but you know, we'll see, right? Strength feels pretty much the same as well, even though the Ravensburger piece does seem a bit on the thinner side. But you know what I'm always more interested in when it comes to putting these together? You know, it's of course the fit and the hold. And from what I remember from my first experience with Robinsberger, it was a it was a bit on the crumbly side and I wasn't too thrilled about that. Schmidt, I mean, I remember absolutely loving my first experience and it has been a while since I've worked on one. But anyways, guys, I'm going to stop rambling now because I'm starting to, you know, lose track of what I'm saying. So you know what? Let's just move on with this. All right, so I felt like the sorting for this was overall pretty straightforward because, I mean, to be honest, we, we have some pretty clear details in this image. So what I did was I separated, of course, the edge pieces. I have a tray here with a bunch of white pieces and pieces for Cinderella's face. So in short, this is Cinderella's tray. Next one here, I mean, this one was slightly tricky. I kind of just did a bunch of pieces that had you know, very distinct, like, pixie dust, starry bits? I don't know, but it's gonna be all this area. Not the, not the area for the dress, those are in here. But like these really sparkly pieces. I'm not really describing this right, but you can kind of get an idea just by looking at this tray. The next one here, I did pieces for the fairy godmother, the horse and carriage, pretty much just the other characters in the image as well as the carriage. And then for this tray, I think what I did here was the bluey grayish pieces, not necessarily like the bright white for her dress. This tray is for pieces that have the film reel in it, dark pieces with sparkles, and then these are just plain dark pieces here. So yeah. I mean, of course it's not perfect and it's not meant to be, but I think it's gonna give me a really good head start with this image. I'm still deciding what to, you know, start with, but you know, we'll get to that. All right, let's move on. So because the edges were looking a bit intimidating to start with, I decided to start putting the characters together. Cinderella's pieces were the easiest for me to spot in the bunch, so she was first. But her dress though, I'm, that was a bit challenging. But I was glad to get that focal point in the image mostly done and centered on my table so that I can continue to start mapping out the other sections out easily. Especially since I didn't work on the edges first. And it was at this point where I really started to think about my very first Ravensburger puzzle. I started to remember how it left me feeling quite underwhelmed and 
honestly let down. I expected so much more, and I wanted this one to be different. I wanted this one to change that sour view that had stuck with me since. And it was also at this point where I started to see some hope. Ugh, it always feels good to do a Disney puzzle. Though I feel like I'm getting a little bit of lifting in some areas, with some pieces the fit is a little strange. But I don't feel like this is crumbly, like my, my first experience. This, this one seems a lot better. So yeah, I mean, I don't know why in the beginning, just as a side note, I don't know why I started with Cinderella's dress. I mean, it looks like it'd be the hardest part of the image and it's really challenging. This area wasn't too hard to piece together and the fairy godmother was pretty easy as well. What I will say though is, you know, that tray that I had all, like these pieces, you know, just resort it, sort it by character or sections and whatnot and it helps you get through it a lot quicker. But yeah, in regards to Cindy's dress, what I did was for this area, you kind of see these lines going throughout the dress. What I did is line up the pieces according to that orientation. So that kind of helped me piece this area out a little quicker than if I would just leave the pieces in a pile. So that's a little tip for you as well. I know I had a big mess on my table at one point, but you know, that's just me, right? I can't help that kind of stuff. But anyways, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I'm a little slower than usual because again, I'm still dealing with my jet lag since I got back from England. But what's most important is that I am having fun putting this together because it's Disney, man. But anyways, so let's move on with this. So I feel like we got a pretty good amount of this done so far. But now I feel like I'm getting on to the really challenging areas. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do next now is start working on the film reel part of the image. I'm not sure how difficult that's going to be. It looks a bit challenging, but I don't think it's going to be more challenging than the dark background. But we shall see, right? As I said, you know, we'll start working on this area of the puzzle and then last I think we'll start filling in all the very very difficult gaps. Honestly I have no idea how long that's going to take me. Hopefully not incredibly long because I really want to I really want to get started on the next one. So I think the best thing to do here is to start probably going through all the pieces with all the film. Oh my god this this looks insane. But yeah um you know what I'm just gonna get started. Putting together the film reel wasn't too bad really, but those sparkles in the dark background, that was a different story. This is when I started to sort by shape to help me get through it. And that also helped for the edges, and I was glad I left that closer to the end. But anyways, enough about how I completed it. Let's get on with the overall quality and experience. This Ravensburger experience was definitely a lot better than my first one. This time, I was able to see why so many love this brand. The pieces themselves are great quality, the print is fantastic, and I didn't really have any major glare issues. I'm not really sure what the lifting was about early on, but some of the sections did hold well together. I didn't find this one to be as crumbly as my first experience, and I was happy about that. I wanted this one to be better. It was an enjoyable experience. In the end, jet lag and all, this puzzle took me about 8 hours to complete. I don't know, it felt like it was a lot longer than that, but again, that could have just been the jet lag. But anyways, that's okay, because I most certainly could not wait to get started on the next one. It'd been quite a while since I last worked on a Disney Thomas Kincaid. I was super excited, not only because of the image, but also because it's Schmidt. I gotta be careful how I say that name. Alright, going through this sort... I can already tell this is going to be a lot tougher than I expected. But here's what I did. Of course we have the edge pieces. This tray is just water pieces. This tray here, I put mainly like the light greener pieces. Anything that has to do with these areas also included the path and the bridge. Then for the next tray what I did was pieces that I believe to be anything to do with trees. It's a huge pile. And you know, we have two, three big tree trunks here. So I don't know if I did that correctly or not, who knows. This tray is anything that had flowers in them. This tray 
is for any of the buildings in the image. So we have the seven dwarfs house and we have the castle in the background. This tray is very, very small amount of pieces, but I mainly put it in there, just Snow White and any of the animals in the forest. And then for the last tray, what I did was any pieces that I believe that had to do with the sky. At least I think that's what it was. I couldn't really tell the difference between the sky pieces, water pieces, trees. Uh, it was it was tough, but I did my best and let's hope for the best. So as you can see, I started working on this puzzle on a new puzzle mat that was sent to me for one of my collaborations. So be on the lookout for that video, which will be coming out very soon. I mean, at least I hope I really need to work on my filming and editing schedule. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Snow White's pieces were the ones that stood out to me the most, so I figured, you know what, let's just get her out of the way. Then moved on to the nosy deers and edges, which I found to be pretty easy. Then quickly on to the cottage, the bridge, and then I got bold and started attacking the water, which was one of the bigger piles. But after getting stuck with that, I immediately moved on to the small sky area, which judging from the pile looked like it was going to be fairly simple. And it was. So I'll keep saying it guys, never let yourself get stuck in one area of the image for too long. Just, just move on. Especially if you tend to quickly lose momentum and get frustrated. Remember, puzzling is not for frustration, it's for fun. And speaking of fun, I mean, yeah, this puzzle very early on was already hitting me differently. My goodness, what a difference. And I've only been working on this for one day so far, obviously not in one sitting, but I have gotten, I feel so much done. I was thinking a lot of the upper area of the image was gonna be very challenging, but I feel like I was able to put this whole side of it together very quickly. So who knows, maybe this area that I was really frightened about is not gonna be as hard as I thought. I did this off camera, but I was starting to resort the tray with all the flower pieces and kind of started putting it together already on the sorting tray. But yeah, again, resorting is key to getting through this puzzle. So you know what guys, let's move on with this because I'm having too much fun and I can't stop piecing this together. So let's, let's go. One of the most satisfying things about Schmidt puzzles is that hold. I was able to pick up those flower sections from the tray, no matter the size, and place them in position on my table without a single piece falling off. It was incredibly satisfying. And my last Schmidt did the same thing to me, and it really was one of the reasons why I couldn't wait to work on this one. It's amazing enough that these pieces feel so good in my fingers. They're nice and sturdy, and I must say, this print once again was fantastic. I mean, this is a Thomas Kincaid image, which are notoriously blurry because you know, they're like a painting and you know, blurriness spells trouble. It makes everything 10 times harder, but this, it was easy to make out what was printed on these pieces. It just doesn't seem like the same quality print you'd find on, for example, a Seiko Thomas Kincaid puzzle. It's different. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but what I do know is that I need to continue growing my Thomas Kincaid collection, but in Schmitz. I know that'll be more expensive, but you know what? It'll be so worth it. All right, I still can't stop working on this puzzle. But I'm at a point now where, of course, like always, I'm stuck. So as you can see here, I mean, I'm just about done, really. All I have left now is like all the trees and the, the rest of the sky and whatnot. And I'm at a point, again, like, look all my pieces. They all kind of look the same. I got to figure out which ones are the, the trees, the branches, where the leaves go. And I got to fill in all these little gaps as well. But as you can see, I have, I have a mess here. It's challenging now, it's, it's gotten quite, quite interesting. But anyways, let's continue on with this because I, I can't wait to finish it. So I know I said it before that when you get stuck in an area, you move on to the next. But what if you're pretty much near the end already? Well, my new favorite thing to do is, well, you guessed it, resort. But at this point, it's by shape. And you can also even sort again by similar colors, details, and whatnot if you really want it to. And it is much easier to do this towards the end because usually you won't have many pieces left anyways. This helps me to very clearly see what should pop in next. 
And I absolutely love this trick or, or tip, whatever you want to call it. It helped me to get this puzzle completed in about seven hours. Time flies when you're having fun. It really didn't feel like seven hours. But what wasn't fun was that one of my pieces was missing and I started freaking out. My husband found me all frantic in my room and I started getting quiet, which he knows is never a good thing. So of course he put his superhero cape on, grabbed a light and started searching my room whilst I sat on my chair feeling defeated and silently fuming. And of course, after about 10 minutes, he did find it hiding behind a puzzle box on my shelf. He really is my superhero. And once that final piece was in place, I was then able to sit back down and really think about my time with both of these great puzzles. Okay, that was almost a very sad ending for me, but thank goodness my hubby came and saved the day. So now that I can put that little scare behind me, let's quickly go over the similarities between these two German brands. Now in terms of the overall piece quality, I have to say, both prints on these pieces were great. The colors were sharp and they were very true to the box image. They have a really nice finish to them. They're more on the matte side, so I didn't really have any major glare issues. And in terms of the piece size, they're pretty much the same. And they're also very sturdy pieces. Plus you get a very good variety of piece shapes. And of course, let's not forget that overwhelming amount of puzzle dust that we all love. And the lack of poster, even though there's been reports of some Ravensburgers carrying them now. But both brands have an amazing selection of images. I mean, especially the Disney ones with the Ravensburgers. I mean, you just can't beat those. There's definitely something for everyone. And I'm pretty sure they are around the same price range. But Ravensburger does seem more readily available in the US. But anyways, back to the overall quality and experience between these two brands. I did start noticing differences when it came to the overall fit and hold. And it's interesting because I feel like both puzzles were cut very well. But for some reason, the Ravensburger had this weird lift to it with some of the completed sections. I don't know, I can't really describe it, but it almost seemed like those areas, the puzzle pieces were fitting a bit tight. At least that's what I think can cause that kind of situation on a puzzle. I'm not really sure. And the overall hold was quite different as well. And I kind of think that had some, that had mostly to do with the thickness of these pieces. Schmidt was visibly thicker than Ravensburger. And of course I had to grab the calipers to see the actual difference. And still, because of that, I think that's what made Schmidt's hold immensely more satisfying to me. I was able to pick up all my sections, pretty much no matter what size or how many pieces it had, and place them wherever I needed them to be. I even got a bit too excited at times and shook them around a bit, just to see how long they'd hold for. And it didn't disappoint. But don't do that with your puzzles, because you might end up losing pieces like me. But anyways, it also held up very beautifully to the pickup test. And it survived the storage test with a few minor casualties, but that's okay, it was nothing I couldn't fix. Truly, it was satisfaction to the max. But as I said earlier, my experience with this particular Ravensburger was a lot better overall. And I did have a number of happy moments where I was able to pick up some sections. I just had to be a little quick and smoother about it. And it held up to the pickup test, which it's something Ravensburger is notorious for. But its random crumbly nature did very much show up for the storage test, and that wasn't extremely successful. But it tried, and it was okay in the end. Again, I know that storage test is not something you guys would normally do anyways, it's just something that I like to do to kind of see how they hold together. And of course to see if I could save them without too much work involved. But still, at the end of the day, I don't think this comes close to the Schmidt puzzles in terms of quality and overall experience. So to me, this still stays the clear winner. Schmidt, to me, is next level. I mean, they mean serious business. And honestly, I don't know what the heck it could be, but the feelings that build up inside me when I'm putting a Schmidt puzzle together, 
it's it's indescribable. I, I, I don't know. It's it feels like pure bliss. I'm I'm just so darn happy when I'm putting a Schmidt together. And I'm not kidding when I say this, but there were moments when when I was piecing this together, and I would notice after a while that my face was actually hurting me, and it was because I was I was stuck smiling the whole time. And I know that might sound very silly and I, that I'm making it up, but I'm, I'm totally serious. I guess that's just what a really good puzzle does to me. So if you're also looking for a face cramp, I highly recommend you try a Schmidt puzzle if you haven't already. Let me know down below if putting a Schmidt puzzle together also makes your face hurt, or if you feel like I've just spoke a load of you-know-what and you hate Schmidt, you know, that's okay, you can let me know that too. And if there are any other puzzling experience that you'd like to share with other puzzlers or with me, I do have a community that you can join. So I'm going to leave a link to that video down below so that you can look more into it. Now, as some of you know, I do have another Schmidt experience coming up very soon. And this one is going to be my most ultimate challenge yet. So if you want to see me tackle that beast, hopefully with a smile on my face, be sure to subscribe if you're new here. And if you want to see my very first experience with the Ravensburger puzzle, I'm going to make sure to leave the video right here so that you can check it out. But anyways, guys, I need to get a serious move on with my next project because you probably guessed it, I'm behind schedule again. But that's okay. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope all is well, and I will see you in the next one.